Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a musician that lives here in town. And much like last week, uh, where there was an interesting story about how I came to know about this person, a similar thing happened with this person. And it was because of YouTube. It was because of a random suggestion on YouTube. And not even about this person. It was a video where the person was talking about a subject I was interested in and then mentioned a person in Madison who did this subject, which was a uh, cassette recording, uh, creating a cassette tape label. So he's a musician. He's also an artist. He did the album artwork for a lot of the stuff. He's, uh, he, he draws and makes other artwork. He creates a lot of stuff is what it amounts to. And he's done videos, vlogs, things like that. And uh, he uh, has a lo-fi style of music that he puts out. And I wanted to meet him. So we did. And we had a conversation and uh, it was really fun talking. And so here's the interview starting right now. I'm Jason Lambeth and uh, uh, I make stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a day job that keeps me pretty busy uh, as a early childhood um, educator. And, then, and I'm a and I'm a dad, and so those are my full time jobs. And then when I'm not doing those, I I make a lot of music and I make a lot of I make some art as well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and actually, okay, so this is the funny thing. I discovered the art after I discovered the music, and I want to tell you the story of how I discovered the music. Even though you live okay. here in town where I am, you live in Madison, and I'm yep. surprised. I mean, I probably have heard of you, but wasn't aware what the name was or something like that. Like you've probably played a show somewhere and I saw it or somebody shared a post or things like that. But this is how I found out about you. Okay. So you watch YouTube or I watch YouTube and occasionally you do things like, cause I make music as well. So I research like, how do I promote this or how do I do this and that? And then YouTube goes, Hey, so you're going to like all these other things about like making music or putting stuff online or recording music. Right. And it suggested a channel called other record labels. And the guy said, okay. making your own cassettes. So I'm watching it going, okay, that'd be interesting. I used to make cassettes and we used to, back when Sleepless Night Studios was here in town, we used to actually produce cassettes over there. He had a maker, a dubbing thing and the yeah, print and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I'm watching it. And the guy goes, I just had a conversation with a guy who has his own tape label in Madison, Jason. And then <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, there's a dude that does that. And then I looked it up and that's how I found you. So yeah. <laughs> it was a YouTube I, suggestion. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, Scott from other record labels was very kind, um, and we, we sort of discovered each other um, through Reddit, I think, okay. at some point. And and he had me on his uh, podcast about about make about record labels, really sort of early on. Um, see, I, I kind of I played music for a long time, and then I I quit. I kind of quit everything. Um, you know, pretty soon after having a kid. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was, I mean, not not like super soon but it just sort of trailed off like you know there was there's um no real desire to stay out um locally at like at mickey's you know until two o'clock in the morning on a thursday right. night playing you know they just uh, that just sort of trailed off for me and um my my drummer my, my friend elsa that plays drums with me uh she moved away um at the time hmm. i think pretty soon after to to go to grad school. So it's like, it's just sort of the stars aligned for me to take a break. And, and, um, but then I came, I came back to it, um, you know, after kind of setting up this business with my wife of, uh, taking care of kiddos and, uh, and like, and, and now we have two kids. And so after, after some life experience <laughs> of about four or five years, I came, I came back to it and slowly started making music again. And, uh, with the intent to just kind of put it up anonymously on Bandcamp or something. Okay. Um, but then the more you do that, like the more myself, I, I thought, well, I want to release, you know, I want to put something physical out. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, CDs are easy, but they just didn't seem as interesting as cassettes. I mean, vinyl would be a dream, but right. it's very expensive and uh, it takes a very long time to produce. Well, are um, you making the cassettes yourself or are you have, having them done somewhere? Um, I've done a mix. There okay. are a couple of companies. Uh, there's one in uh, Springfield, Missouri um, called National Audio Company that I've used. And then 
also you can buy buy them in bulk and and i've got you know four or five old uh uh cassette recorders like pretty big cassette okay. recorders that I, and i just dub them real time i don't have a duplicator like you were talking about with okay your, uh friend um but so yeah so i i did that um i kind of well i I thought I want to put a label name on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I started a label um, kind of incidentally, like uh, it's called painted blonde. Um, just to, at first, just to put my own stuff on it, just to have a label on it. Cause I feel like, Oh, maybe people will take this a little bit more seriously if there's a label on it, okay. label name on it. Um, but then, uh, and at the, around the same time, my friend Elsa coincidentally moves back to town and she had been working on music. So we put out one of her, uh releases and on cassette and uh, and through Bandcamp. um and then you know so, you know slowly i just i don't I, I i'm not sure at this point like, how many releases are on the label um but i did put out a few more releases uh and then COVID hit and that just sort of yeah <laughs> sort of ruined the momentum uh and uh and like i've said i got two kids and we kept them home for a very long time um to kind of keep them out of harm's way with that. And so the first thing to go is the the tape label. Just I just didn't have time for it. Oh, so you're not uh, doing the tape label anymore? No, I just sort of put it on the back burner. Okay. Um, yeah. Were you releasing yeah, like, other people's work on the tape label or was it just yours? Yeah, I did a handful of other, other folks. Uh, just uh, people that I met mainly through Instagram and YouTube. It's kind of crazy. Really? Uh, yeah, would you reach yeah, out to would, them or would they reach out to you? Like, how did these interactions happen? Um, both really. Um, you know, I had, a, uh, I, I developed a, a really great friendship with, um, a gentleman, Mike Parrish. Um, we've collaborated a lot, like over the last couple of years, he has a YouTube channel, uh, called 424 recording, which was sort of all centered around originally kind of all centered around recording on a four track mm -hmm. tape machine. Um, and so, Cause I, cause I kind of got back into this. I, you know, I had a box of these old four track tapes from the early two thousands and, and I wanted to go through and see what was on them. So I, I was able to find a four track on eBay and bought that. And then I started looking up on YouTube. How, how does this thing work again? Right. And, uh, and I, so I discovered him and, you know, he's got this really cool community around his, uh, around his channel and um and we became friends i ended up putting out one of his albums and then oh yeah at, at some point and i and i've designed some artwork for him as well like quite a bit of art uh since since we've become friends yeah um yeah and then there was there's another uh musician that you know i found i found through some sort of cassette tag on instagram i think and, okay and he just uh um, made really great and he still makes really great music but sort of in line with um, what what I'm into which is kind of a pretty lo-fi indie rocks type stuff yeah and uh, so he was he was my last release um, like we I think we released it April 2020 just like right as everything was yeah. going nuts like you know it's just like I don't know. It was like, I don't know. Back when all we thought we had these. to do was wash our hands. <laughs> I know. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to drop these in the mail, like these cassettes in the mail to people. And I hope that they get to you. Cause I don't know what the post office is doing at the, you know? Yeah. And luckily everything worked out, but, um, That's... but yeah, pretty soon after that, I was just like, this is, it's too much. Like I can't, right. you know, like teach my kids and, uh, you know at the time we're still like bleaching grocery right. <laughs> groceries or whatever it's yeah like, yeah it was kind of nuts so um I, I just yeah i just sort of stepped back from it and and just continued to make my own music and uh and work on art whenever i can how long have you been making music like when did you what, like what was the first band if you were ever in a band that you that you did my first band um i started when i was about 20 or 21 oh you started that late okay yeah yeah that's like super late to wait did you even people. know how to play an instrument or like you started playing no, an instrument really no. i didn't even i didn't even start i i i was a huge rem fan in high school so okay. i thought like i didn't really need to play an instrument i could just sing but i didn't know how to sing um right so it was pretty awful um but i convinced <laughs> and and i i grew up uh, in a small town in oklahoma outside of tulsa so uh yeah it was you know 
my first year in college, I convinced a few friends uh, that, like, they, I, I, I don't know, they must have just had raw talent because they picked it up pretty quickly. Okay. Um, like, none of us, none of us could play anything. And, uh, and I convinced them that, you know, they could play guitar or bass or whatever, right. and I could sing. And, and we just immediately started writing songs. And it was, I mean, it's awful, but uh, that was sort of the gateway. I, I don't know. I just always, you know, I always loved listening to music. Uh, while I was making the art and mm -hmm. um, and I was always sort of inspired by musicians and and you know like I would take from like lyrics or songs you know for titles for artwork whenever I was younger um, so it just at some point it dawned on me you know I finally listened to what these people were talking about in interviews that anybody could do it and and tried it and but I you know I for me, it took 15, 20 years to right <laughs> to really. I'm surprised you started so late. To about. tell you the truth, that's that, that's interesting, and also the fact that you play several different instruments now. Uh, I mean, you record most of your own stuff, right? All the instruments and everything yeah. yourself. So, yep, yep. That's one of those things where it's like, damn it, you just hopped on and got going. That's nice. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it was it was slow going for many many years, but yep. So, yep. So I played. We did this little band for a little bit and then, you know, we were kids and we moved off and, and I played keyboards actually in a, in a band in Oklahoma for a few years before okay. I moved to Madison. All right. Why, why did then, you move to Madison? Um, an, an ex relationship. Okay. Me here. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and I loved Madison and at the, at the time, whenever we split, um, I was working at a coffee shop and I just loved it. I was, I was enjoying life in Madison, so there was it, there's not many reasons to go back to Oklahoma other than family. Okay, and is the weather better? <laughs> the weather better here? No, well, there. You know, uh, oh, there. Um, you know, I I don't like the heat so much, so really, I can yeah, okay. I can handle I can handle this uh, these freezing temperatures that we're experiencing now. All right, well, I disagree, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> that's the reason I ask. It's like one degree oh, outside right. right now, and I'm not liking it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like June, July through September. It's just a hundred degrees every oh, day. I love there. it though. Oh man. Oh, <laughs> I, and it's you're all not, yours. You're not the it's only yours. person that disagrees with me. People tell me that all the time, and I'm like, I love that. I wish it was that way year round. I do like fall though. Anyway, this isn't a conversation about weather. So, <laughs> so you started doing. Now you were doing these bands, and then when did you start just making your own music and putting it out, or why? Actually, I should say, why did you just start doing it yourself? Um, you know, I just. I've always, I don't know, just tinkered and, and made stuff. Like I was constantly, you know, writing stuff. And uh, the band I was in, in Oklahoma, we had, we were like a six piece band and I wasn't the primary songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would contribute kind of ideas like to start off a song or something here and there, but I would, uh, yeah, I just, I wasn't the primary songwriter. So I had my little four track and I just started, you know, writing songs on on it okay. um and then and yeah i don't know i just i just no other reason than just exploring it you know exploring music and um and that just kind of led to me just like always always doing that other than that five-year period where i took a break um you know i ended up in madison and I was just sort of tinkering in my in my apartments or in my basements, mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't till probably 2009, 2010 or so, where I started booking some shows at the coffee shop that I was working at. Like I was booking other bands, where the other bands found out that I was making music. Okay, <laughs> and so that that kind of like brought me out of out of the house to play shows for the first time in a long time. What would you say? This, you said the style of your music, you would say lo-fi. Now, I, I've i always thought like stuff I do is lo-fi and everything, but I finally looked it up the other day because I realized I was just kind of assuming what that what that meant. And it actually just yeah. means recording method, like home recording, like any kind of music could really be lo-fi. Kind of like how I sure. discovered the other day that emo is technically just what the lyrics are not necessarily what the music is even though there, there's a specific oh really yeah i know that's what i'm saying oh, i i don't know how wild. i went down this rabbit hole the other day but i was looking up those two terms because i keep hearing them and i keep thinking like people were telling me the stuff i was doing is emo and i'm like really 
I don't think so. I know what emo is. And then I looked up the definition of it, and it's really just emotionally based lyrics is the prime reason behind them. So like there are a lot of things that could be emo. And also growing up, and this is just a weird side tangent, um, I always thought emo had something to do with emo Phillips. So I was very confused about the emo genre for a very long time. Oh, uh, I don't know emo Phillips. Oh, he's a, he's uh, a really weird comedian. Uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's really weird, and in the sense, that's why I thought it was called that, because he's weird, and at the time, the music was very off-kilter and strange. Anyway, that's a weird side tangent. It has nothing to do with oh, anything. Cool. Um, but anyway, so you were doing artwork for these albums as well, and that's something I always enjoy doing, is uh, the fact that it's an excuse to go, I'm going to draw a thing for a thing. Um, yeah. And you do, <laughs> and you do uh, like collage art for it. Now, have you always done collage art? Did you do it specifically for the albums no, that you're putting out or like, how did you start doing of, collage stuff? It just sort of evolved over time. Um, okay. For a long time I would use, you know, I, I would do drawings or I would do paintings for earlier releases. I had a different like name that I recorded under it was, uh, Elton fun. Uh, it's a terrible, terrible <laughs> name, uh, which I, I'm glad I put to rest, but I think, I, yeah, over the years I would do sort of paintings and drawings and then I, and I always kind of was intrigued by collage, but yeah. it seemed like, um, I don't know. It seemed like it just, nobody took it seriously for a long time. I don't you know. Think so maybe that was, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I, I um, maybe it's just, I, I had a, I had a professor that in college that definitely didn't take it seriously. <laughs> so I, you know, that might've been like his stigma on it, but, um, yeah. And so I don't, at some point I started to sort of, um, bring it into it. But whenever I started doing the, I started doing red pants music in 2018. That's like the, the name that I record under now. And, um, and at the same time, I also started making art again. It was just kind of like, like, let me do all this at once. I don't know. It was crazy. Oh, so you had stopped but, uh, making art before that too. Yeah, pretty much. I okay. Was, you know, drawing like, uh, robots and princesses and dinosaurs with the kids. Right. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't doing much. Um, That's still yeah, making yeah. art. <laughs> yeah, you know, it I, I, no, it's I, subjective. I, I agree. It's uh that's that's just as hard as doing anything else. Um, harder for me, I think. <laughs> but uh, like, uh, yeah, I, 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 um, I don't know. Collage was just like I, I had these magazines saved up, you know, that I and I was really kind of which i would use a lot of times i use those as references for drawings but okay um but then i I, yeah i delved pretty deep into it whenever i got back into into making stuff part of it is like you know it's it's quick a lot of the times um and you think so having kit i i mean sometimes okay it it can be like with the i've I've done pretty minimal stuff um, Which I like. I really dig that. I have a, pro- I have two problems with it. I love collage and I would love to do it, but whenever I do it, it either looks like I have no idea what I'm doing or I just cut up a bunch of stuff and splattered it all over the page. Like it, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason what I do. Yours is very minimalistic. You use uh, bright colors in the background. Like when I go to do that, I don't know where, where I'm starting from. And you said you had a collection of magazines and stuff. Like how are you leafing through these and finding the ones that you want to use or coming up with stuff? Like, do you set them aside I mean, or are you just off the cuff? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll cut cut things out. Like, I mean, to the to my the sides of me, we're at sort of my table here. There's, um, I have some baskets just full of cutouts. Okay. Um, that I there's cutouts in there that I've had for years that I haven't found where you know where they go yet. Okay. Um, but I mean, I can have a magazine for probably ten years and go through it hundreds of times, and you know, the first year I find something and I think that's awesome. And then leave everything else. And then 10 years later, I come back and I find something completely new because, you know, my tastes have evolved and changed. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, like, yeah, like where the collage thing came from, I think, yeah, like I was kind of saying that, um, that sometimes it can be kind of fast, you know, I can, whether instead of having a ton of acrylic paints out when you have little kids around, Oh have, yeah. Uh, you know, like I have clippings and I, and I have some glue and, um, just keep the glue and exacto knife away from them and you're okay. Okay. <laughs> now, did you have any background in, oh, you said you had a professor that, uh, that didn't think collage was good. So did you go to school for art? I guess is what I was getting at. I, 
I started to, yeah, I started to. I went for a couple of years, um, you know, and I guess studio arts or whatever was my major. I, 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 I didn't make it far enough to really get in, get into it because I, I got into music and, and, uh, and I was like, well, I can work in a record store and I'll figure it out later. And I just never went back. <laughs> Did you work in a regular record store and figure oh, it out yeah, later? Yeah, I was working at it. Well, I don't know if I ever figured anything out, but you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, that's 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 really all you want, isn't it? I mean, you don't want to be like famous and touring the world. It's like, can you get by and have some fun? <laughs> you know, right. and make what yeah, you want. Exactly. I mean, I yep, feel to yep. me that's the dream. To tell you the truth, yeah, I've got my my basement of uh, of junk, and I'm yeah, pretty happy. Yeah. And here's the, so you didn't go to school for music. You just picked it up at 20, but you went to school for art. And yeah. I, I've, I've actually had several conversations with musicians the same way about that. Whereas like music isn't what they stu- I rarely find a musician that went to school for art or uh, school for music. For music. Yeah. yeah. It's so strange. I, mean, I, I, I could see it just like sucking the fun out of it. Cause I feel like <laughs> that's that, a good point. Actually. <laughs> that sucked, I mean like that, that was with, for art for me, it was just like kind of, tainted it for a while i think for me huh. being in sort of a academic uh world for art okay uh, yeah now were there collage much like the music that you put out you said you had influences and were studying things like with collages is, is it just something that you started you're like this might be cool or were there actually people that influenced you or things that you saw where you're like i'd like to try and make art like that yeah i i think uh pretty early on i discovered like um there's a woman holly i think it's holly chastain okay um and she's pretty i feel like she's a modern collagist and she does this sort of she's done sort of minimalist stuff um that i've done in the past like she was a pretty good influence on me early on um another one is anthony zeninos i believe i think um, i hope i'm pronouncing names right um but uh and he is like he's fairly well known and does does a lot of the i I would say i uh borrowed heavily from him and using construction paper and little people yeah and the negative space the use of like the one color and uh you know one person in the negative space okay yeah i i would like to check that stuff out because like i said i'd like to do it i know nothing about it i don't know where to start so yeah it's, it, i mean it's it's an amazing huge world to look through on instagram there's so many amazing people doing it now that i just can't even keep up okay <laughs> yeah th- those are a couple that i feel like 10 years ago when i was kind of looking at it and kind of getting into it and starting to buy magazines that i thought oh they're cool okay yeah and i've continued to follow them through the years all right and what are some things that you're looking to do in the future, like with, uh, so you stop the tape label and uh, I'm, I'm assuming you might pick it up again. Like if things pick up or are you just kind of like done doing that? I'm I'll also never say never. Like, that's true. You know, that's good. That's a good point. I, I think, yeah, I think, um, uh, if the right kind of project comes along that might pull me out of it. Um, but yeah, I, I had this whole thing where I wanted to make the album covers and, you know, I was really just kind of a control freak over it. And <laughs> Having so artistic vision like, doesn't mean you're a control freak. <laughs> well, it's just a little. It, maybe it was unhealthy, you know. Was, and and also, it's like how many how many good album covers can I make, you know, like um, before I make a crappy one was kind of a concern for me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I was just like, okay, like you know, uh, um, that's that was another good reason to kind of take a break. So it's like uh, I don't want to mess anybody's art, like album artwork up. But, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it it could happen again, but. So you're, um, wait, so you're, you're saying, saying you like, were making artwork for other people's albums? Oh, yeah, yeah. So okay. Everybody, um, everybody oh, you're talking. Oh, I get what I release you're saying. through the label. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. So, so, yeah. So it was kind of like a, uh, like a full package deal where I would, you know, make the cassettes and the, and the artwork and everything for them. Yeah. yeah. There's actually, a, there's a guy that uh, I had put uh, one of our EPs through. He has a, he runs a net label uh, called Block Sonic and he does the same thing too. Like I originally, I'm used to having to do our artwork and everything just because we self-publish yeah. or just put it on our website. Like we don't think twice about it and then we promote it that way. And we went through him because he's a nice guy and I've talked to him before and a friend of mine knows him and he wanted to do an EP of ours. And I sent him and I was like, here's some ideas for the artwork. And he's like, no, 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 I, I, 
I do the artwork for the albums. He, not in a malicious way. He was just like, I yeah, didn't know. Yeah. And I was surprised. I was like, oh, sweet. I don't have to do any work. Kick ass. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. It's kind of nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, and and that's kind of kind of interesting. He he does his through uh, digital uh, downloads, and then also through uh, CDs. He he now has CD prints that he does, which I want to say it was something. This is a weird connection, and one of the reasons why I was like, hell yeah, we'll put it on there. Um, Chuck D somehow is the guy that runs the company they manufacture the CDs through, like, oh, wow. because <laughs> yeah. the whole label started out as a group of guys that were on a public enemy forum. And they all met and they would collaborate and send stems back and forth to each other and would make rap music and put it out. And then he created this label to release their stuff. And that's how he started it. And it's, it's an interesting backstory. Even if I'm getting yeah. that wrong, it's still a neat story. Like there's <laughs> somewhere in there that is like there are pieces of the correct story if I'm missing bits of it. But I just thought that was fascinating. Anyway, so yeah, he did the artwork too. So that makes sense that you were making the artwork for the tapes. And then, uh, but, but yeah, that's got a, I mean, how are you finding time to make music during all this while you were also putting out stuff on a tape label? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> Good I was answer. Doing cause, yeah. Cause I mean, I, I definitely was doing, I, uh, I released an album in the, in the middle of everything. Um, yeah. uh, and, uh, yeah, it was pretty, I kind of spaced it out and I, by the, by the end of the fall, um, I would sort of plan to take a break, you know, through the winter and then start up again in the spring with releases. That was mm -hmm. kind of my, that was my thought process is like, okay, I'll, I'll kind of do six months on the label and um, okay. six months off kind of thing or yeah, like makes eight sense. months, four months or something. Um, but yeah, just, just so I wasn't getting like crazy burned out or something and that, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I made it work. It was kind of, <laughs> but uh, you know, like, I, I will say my, you know, my kids were in school and right. <laughs> that made okay. a huge difference, you know, and, um, and yeah, so they've, they've just now gone back to school and it's like, like I'm kind of coming out of the, out of the ground, like, whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> See me, I got that out of the way way early. Like when you were starting music in your twenties, I was already yeah. playing music and had a kid in my twenties. So it was one of those but, things where like I was able to, but somehow I was able to, you know, kind of push through and go, I can you, do both because I had that energy. You had the, the energy of the young man. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, like, and it all made sense person. in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I cannot imagine myself in my twenties with a child. But And that's the yeah. hilarious part is most of the guys I know now or musicians that I work with now, um, they they had their kids like a few years back and now their kids are in like grade school or whatever. And, and they're talking about how tough it is. And I was like, all right, let's do a comparison about how tough it was me doing it in my twenties and playing shows every night, you showing up for a couple hours once a week, you know, it's, it's not the same thing. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> But um, now you also have a very active YouTube channel and uh, put out a lot of videos, vlogs and stuff like that. Like, uh, is this all just part of the, like, do you just, when you're writing the song, record the process? Like, how are you making these videos or coming up with the ideas as well? Um, I mean, I did in the past. I feel like that's sort of gone dormant as well. You think so? With the label. Okay. It, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, it kind of comes and goes, it seems like. <laughs> I mean. Nothing wrong with that. How, that's just how, how life is, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I, with the influence of Mike from uh, 424 Recording I was talking about earlier, you know, he was just, he was, whenever I was starting to get back into this stuff, he was like, put put up stuff on YouTube, like whatever. And um, and when Elsa and I started to record an album in 2019, okay. I just decided to start documenting stuff on my phone. Yeah. And, um, and so I did, so that was whenever I started kind of doing a vlog. Um, I don't know. I get, I get kind of weird about talking on camera, you know, or doing voiceover stuff. Cause I, for a while I thought, Oh, it's kind of fun to document the process of making the art and talking over it or talking while I'm making it. But that kind of, I don't know, takes me out of the process also, you know, if I'm yeah. sitting there and talking while I'm doing it. Um, so yeah. So I don't know where the YouTube channel is going, but you know, I'll put, I'll definitely put music videos up there. It's kind of a nice place to have if you have like demos or something mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, I, I kind of enjoy editing together little 
demo videos for songs and stuff like that. That was the um, other thing I was going to ask about too, is the, along with the vlog and all that, it's like you're adding another process of like, now I have to edit the video, put it together, set up the voiceovers. How am I going to put this in there? What do I use? Yeah. Like, it's just like putting together a song and like, you know, doing the tracks it's, and like remove this, add this. That's so true. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's uh, at this point, I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did quite a bit with it and that's the thing. And like, you're still, I mean, there are a lot of videos on there. You did a lot. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to do the, the one a week thing for a little while. Uh -huh. And, uh, so, you know, do like little series of like playing live, playing a, one song with a microphone in the backyard or something. Oh yeah. I, I saw that. I mean, you come up, come up with all these funny ideas, you know, well, what kind of things are you like hoping to do in the future? Like what are some, do, do you have ideas for projects or things that you have coming up or stuff you'd like to figure out that you plan to do? Like, even if it's something you're not working on, but you're like, I kind of want to do this. Like what, what are some well, ideas that you have? I mean, I do have a, an album coming out. Oh, um, you do. Yeah. So I, I mean, I have that is finished. It's been, it's been recorded over the past year or like last summer it was recorded. So that's coming out next month. Um, how did, how did that, you record it? Do you record on tape or are you doing digital as well? Um, I do digital as well. Okay. So I have a, I have a Mac, like MacBook from, I don't know, like 2010, 2011 that has this <laughs> okay. sort of ancient, ancient version of logic on it. Oh wow. Um, okay. And yeah, it's like, it's, it's, they did this thing where they put out, um, garage band and they had logic, but for a while they had this thing called logic express. Uh -huh. This is like a student version. So I have the student version of Logic on my on this computer. All right. Um, so basically, Elsa and I, we get together, um, you know, since this past spring, like late spring, we've been able to play together again, you know, since uh, the vaccines rolled up. But, uh, and uh, so we we get together at Madison Music Foundry and I'll just bring my laptop oh, okay. and, a, and a couple of microphones and we'll like mic up her drums and mic up my guitar and basically try to get the, the bare bones of the song recorded. Okay. Um, and, and then I'll, I'll bring it home and start overdubbing. And, and this time I kind of pass the computer to her and she overdubbed some stuff as well, uh, which is kind of new for us. That's how you're collaborating where you're not in the same room. You guys are just sharing the computer and the files. Yeah. Just cause it's, uh, it's, it's an easier thing to do. Like, for me to give her the computer and and her to take it home and sing on top of it that way wait is it know, like I'm a not... tower computer like you're handing her a no, big no, okay it's just, no it's just a laptop it's okay just a laptop. yeah right. <laughs> i was trying to think I'm, back I'm to sure. 2010 and i'm like i can't remember if they had good laptops back then or like was it the uh, was it no, the one it where it was a, it was a tv screen and you it had the handle on it no, whatever that really. one was it's still, it's still i mean it's like they're they're even hef they're a little heftier but they they feel like way stronger okay you know than than what you get today um but this thing it's still like it runs that program perfectly oh and good it runs itunes perfectly and that's all i use it for and it's amazing <laughs> Funny. and it's got and it's got a ton of ton of like ram or whatever memory and stuff okay. i just had them loaded up whenever i bought it so it still has a ton of space on it yeah, and it just runs really great. What are the rates at Madison Music Foundry? Um, I know that people um, have done that, but I've never asked that question before. Oh, it's like, I think it's around $50, $55 for two and a half hours to just come in and uh, set up. And they've got drum set set up. And yeah, they have the mics and everything and all set yep. up. Okay. Yep. And, you know, and I, I um, we do, uh, since it's winter, since we can't like, I feel kind of weird about, scheduling something and then you know if we have a freak snowstorm and we have to cancel or something oh yeah also also my wife is a is a doula and a midwife in training so she gets oh. called last minute so we uh we've been doing some basement practices over here recently and recording on four tracks just for fun i saw a couple of those that's why i also asked if you were doing it on tape or not because i know that you had done a few videos where you talked about uh it being four track and recording like that yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like to, I like to demo ideas on the four track and cause it's uh you know, you've only got the four tracks and right. um, it's kind of fun to solve problems yeah. <laughs> and just have like the limitations of, of that tape machine. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had been doing that with my phone because I realized that I could import the video. Like when I uh, download the video file from, cause it, I automatically back it up to Google photos and then I uh -huh. download it on my laptop 
and I can actually import that video into like audacity or something. And I can cut the part where I would like, you can just drag it into audacity and it will yeah. have, it will use it as just the audio file. And I, Oh, that's wild. I didn't know audacity had that. Yeah. Function. That's cool. Yeah. So I do yeah. that so I can chop up, like, even though I'll record for like 20 minutes on my phone, I can just cut out the part that I want yeah. and then bring it in. So that's nice. Yeah. That's uh, technology is amazing. I know. And I actually learned <laughs> that from somebody else I talked to. I was like, duh, that makes like when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you yeah. just be able to drag the MP4 file in? Cause MP4 is also an audio file. So I, I like, I, I just only edited videos on iMovie. That's all I have on my, on my computer. Oh, right really? now. And I've, yeah. I've definitely done the drag a movie in there and then you can export the audio from there and uh, yeah. throw it in garage band and stuff and clean it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I love uh, that. I love so that you're that's, that's using cool. the old technology, like from 2000, like that actually adds to the aesthetic of what you do. Like going like, <laughs> I'm going to use the, even, even the digital stuff I'm doing is going to be kind of like it, it, a throwback to some other stuff. And I love that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. I would love to get my hands on like a camcorder or something, but I don't, I've, I've also got enough junk that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> like, know a guy recently who actually just started using it as his uh, camcorder, as his main like video camera that he, really? yeah. And he <laughs> records the stuff in there. Cause he does these, uh, he does these things that are supposed to be like uh throwbacks to like uh drive in movie, like B horror things. And he does a podcast sure, like yeah. that. And he does uh drawing goths, a, um, video series and he wanted it to look like it was an old video like something that you had dubbed and put in there so he actually figured out a way to use an old video camera to do that and i thought that was kind of neat so it is possible is what i'm getting at <laughs> to do yeah stuff that uh, i believe it it's just yeah yeah oh man and then yeah. so you have this new album coming out what's it called um it's called uh when we were dancing okay how many songs are going to be on it yeah. uh nine songs okay and are, yeah. so are you, even though you're not doing the tape label, are you going to be putting a tape version of it out? A tape version is coming out, but it's coming out on a different label. Um, oh, really? So, yeah. So a friend of mine runs a, another tape label. I guess he's technically, he's like a record label. Now he's got actual vinyl out. Um, uh, somebody that I, that I met through Instagram a couple of years ago doing the tapes. Uh, but his, the record label is called Paisley shirt. Okay. Um, records and they're in san francisco and um and i was kind of you know i was kind of telling him and uh i don't know an email exchange or something that i probably wasn't going to be doing my label for a while and and you know he just kind of threw out that that i could have a home on you know i could put something out on his label whenever i was ready and so i said okay i'll do it <laughs> nice for sure well, that worked yeah. out great. <laughs> I know. I know. I was super lucky. Yeah. I swear yeah. every conversation I have with people, it's like, and then it just happened. I love that. I know. I know, right? <laughs> uh, I and believe it. So along with the album, what other things do you have coming up or uh, are there projects you'd like to mention that uh, people could keep an eye out for or something you have done that you'd like to mention that we haven't talked about? Um, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm just taking it day by day at this point. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably just continue recording a lot of stuff <laughs> like, uh, throughout the next, as you have been. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I, Elsa and I already have a ton of songs ready to go for the next, for the next album. Oh, great. So, yeah. So we're going to just start recording probably again, uh, anytime, I guess in the next, probably in the spring or something, we'll start recording again. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad we got the chance oh, to meet yeah. finally. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. 